In our previous lesson, we practiced writing algebraic expressions. Now we're going to use those skills to write algebraic equations. And that means that everything would need an equal sign. So the directions state to translate each sentence into an equation. So 2 added to 3 times the number m is the same as 18. So is the same as means equal. So 2 added to 3 times the number m. So 2 added to 3 times the number m is the same as 18. We could also write 2 added to 3 times the number m is the same as 18. Number 2. Twice a increased by the cube of a equals b. There's our exact translation. 2a plus a cubed equals b. Now future note, you cannot combine these two terms here if they have different types of exponents. Number three, seven less than the sum of p and t is as much as six. So there's our equal sign. This is our backwards translation that we talked about in the previous lesson. So seven less than something would be minus seven. And the sum of p and t would have to come first. So the sum of p and t, seven less than that is as much as six. Number four, the sum of x and its square is equal to y times z. So the sum of x and the square of x is equal to y times z. Now since these are both letters, we can have implied multiplication right here. We don't have to use parentheses. It wouldn't be wrong if you put some in here. It would just be longer. Last one. 4 times the sum of f and g 4 times the sum of f and g is identical to 6 times g. So I know I've got a 6g down here. And let's figure out this first part again. 4 times the sum of f and g. So I want to add, whoops, add f and g together here. So 4 times the sum of f and g, I could even leave that in multiplication as implied invisible multiplication here. Let's take a look at the middle section to translate each sentence into a formula. So that's something that you may know already, like area equals length times width, or um, perimeter equals 2L plus 2W. So let's see what we've got here. The perimeter P of a square, right? So the perimeter of a square is when you add up all four sides, and since it's a square, all four sides are the same. So you could say that the perimeter of a square is four times a side, right? So the perimeter of a square equals four times the length of a side L. So this is what I was thinking, but the problem says I need to use an L. So I'm going to say that the perimeter is equal to four times the length of the side L. So four L lengths. Number seven, the area A, so we're going to start here, of a square is the length of a side L squared. That's it, L squared. The perimeter P of a triangle is equal to the sum of the lengths of the sides A, B, and C. So these formulas should look familiar to you. The area A of a circle is pi times the radius squared. Now you can put the multiplication dot in there if you'd like. Uh, you could use parentheses around this if you'd like, but there's no need. The volume V of a rectangular prism equals the product, right? Oh, we don't like to write that. The product 
of the length L and the width W and the height H. So I need to multiply L, W, and H. Since they're all variables, I don't need to write that multiplication dot, I could leave it as implied multiplication, just like that. You can leave it off. This is not wrong, it's just long, right? Okay, now we're going to go the other way. We're going to take each mathematical sentence and translate it into a verbal sentence. So let's see, I have the sum of g and 10, so the sum of g and 10 is equal to the product of 3 and g. That's one way you could say it. The sum of g and 10 is equal to the product of 3 and g. You could also say g plus 10 is equal to 3 times g. It's very elementary, um, but it's straightforward. How about question 12? Twice p plus 4 times t is the same as 20. Or the sum of the product of 2 and p and the product of 4 and t is equivalent to 20. Right? You could use all those different words here. Number 13. 4, and since the a plus b is in parentheses, I'm going to say 4 times the quantity. So when I use that phrase, the quantity, that means, hey, this next thing is going to be a group, put it in parentheses. So 4 times the quantity of the sum of a and b uh, is equal to 9 times a. Uh, I could also say the sum of a and b multiplied by 4, sum of a and b multiplied by 4, is the same as the product of 9 and a. All right, number 14. I could say here the difference of 8 and 6x, or the difference of 8 and the product of 6 times x. Oh, I could say... 6 times x less than 8, or the product of 6 and x is, um, I can't say is less than because that would be this symbol. So the product of 6 and x less than the number 8, or 8 subtracted by the product of 6 and x is equal to the sum of 4 and 2 times x. Number 15, the sum of f and y times 1 half, I could say that, I could say half the quantity of f plus y, I could say that, or 1 half times the sum of f and y is equal to 5 f minus 5, or 5 less than f. And this last one here, number 16, I'm going to say... The square of k minus the square of n is equal to the product of 2 and b. Or k squared um, subtracted by n squared is equal to the product of 2 and b. Or the square of k um, less the square of d of n squared, the square of n, sorry, the square of k less the square of n is equal to the product of 2 and b. Or n squared. Uh, less than k squared is equal to the product of 2 and b. All right, let's take a look at these last two down here. Write a problem based on the given information. So what have we got here? C equals the cost per pound of plain coffee beans. C plus 3 equals the cost per pound of flavored coffee beans. So what does this tell us? Write a problem. So they're asking us to write a problem about this. So C represents the cost per pound, so this would mean two pounds of plain coffee beans plus one pound of flavored coffee beans, right? How do I know I only have one pound here? Well, 
this c is being multiplied by 2, and this c plus 3 isn't being multiplied by anything, except the invisible 1 out here. So I would say here, um, write a problem. The cost of 2 pounds of plain coffee beans and 1 pound of flavored coffee beans, I'm going to take the liberty of abbreviating here, is uh, $21. I could say that. Now let's take a look over here at question 18. P equals the cost of dinner. 0.15 times P is the cost of a 15% tip. So it looks like I have the cost of dinner plus 15% of P, so a 15% tip. So the cost of dinner plus a 15% tip was $23. And there you have it.